import, export points, and adjust datum in Civil 3D. Let's cover importing points first. On the Insert tab, select Points from File. Under Selected Files, you're going to hit the little plus icon and select the file that you want to bring in. To add a CSV, of course, you need to make sure that the files of type is set to CSV. You'll see that there are other options there like text files, etc. CSV or comma separated value is our typical go-to. Then hit open. You'll notice that a green check mark appears next to the selected file. That means that the file is in a format that AutoCAD recognizes and will be able to import into the drawing. If you see a red X in place of the green check mark, that means that there's something about the file that AutoCAD doesn't recognize. Some of the typical issues that you'll run into there are files that contain a header line that has text instead of point values or alphanumeric points. Civil 3D points can only be created numerically. AutoCAD doesn't accept alphanumeric. So if you have alphanumeric values in the point name column of your CSV or other type of point file, AutoCAD won't be able to bring it in. You'll need to go into the file, select the alphanumeric points, and change their name to some numeric value that AutoCAD can understand. Specify point file format. We're going to go down to PNEZD. The P is for point, N is northing, E is easting, Z is the elevation, and D is description. So that's point, northing, easting, elevation, description. And it's comma delimited, which makes sense because we're using a CSV or comma separated value file. Once the file format has been selected, you'll see a preview below. It just shows you how your data is going to be imported so that you can verify that everything looks correct. Now I could just hit OK, or if I wanted to add these points to a point group, I could do it here as well. If I click add points to point group, it gives me a list of the available point groups, but I want to create something new. So I'll go ahead and hit the point group button to the right, and I'll create a new point group called Topo and Control. Okay, and it's just going to go ahead and dump all of these points into that point group, and I click OK. There was a lot of data in this file, and I can see that at this particular annotation scale, point markers and label styles are all overlapping. So I'm going to change it to something a little more legible. There's one to one. Well, those are tiny. I'm going to create a custom scale, one to five. I find that that's typically the easiest to work with when viewing large sets of point data. Name appearing in scale list. I like to use the format that already exists there. One inch equals five feet. Scale properties, paper units is set to one. The drawing units is set to five. Okay and okay. And then I go down to my annotation scale and select my new custom annotation scale of one to five. That looks like it'll be pretty easy to read and pretty easy to work with. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the vertical datum for this group of point. What's a scenario in which I might need to do that? Well, although working from final control values is always preferred, sometimes we collect or create data working in an assumed datum. Let's say that all of our work was collected from point 203. So I'm going to go to my prospector points, look at the point list, and I can see that 203 has assumed values 5,000, 10,000 in the northing and easting, and 100 in the elevation. Well, let's say we subsequently ran a closed level loop to point 203 and updated its value from the assumed 100 to a final value of 1050.255. Well, to adjust our vertical datum in the command line, I'm going to type in the word datum, D-A-T-U-M, and it's going to ask me for a change in elevation. I could input a delta here, which would be the difference between the 1050.255 and the 100 at point 203. Or I can type in R for reference. Anytime you see something in brackets like this, You'll notice that when I hover over it, the little hand appears. You can also click on those options. Or I could type R for reference. I'm going to left click on it. Specify a reference elevation. Well, our reference was the assumed 100. Enter. Specify a new elevation. Our new elevation was the 1050.255. Enter. So not only has it adjusted my point 203 to the correct final elevation, but it's adjusted everything else in the point file by the same factor. Now this point file would be ready to be used for creating a surface or whatever else needed corrected existing condition elevations at each point. Let's go ahead and export this data. I'm going to go to the output tab in the export group, export points. The format again is PNEZD. 
comma delimited. I'm going to select the destination folder and file name. Notice the file type needs to be CSV. And I'm going to call this my topo base adjusted. Open. If I don't select limit to points in point group, it's going to export all the points from the drawing. So I'll hit OK. If I wanted to export only specific points or a specific point group, I would have selected it there in the output dialog, or I can come over to my point groups in the prospector. Let's go ahead and make a new group that contains only the control, include numbers matching 1 through 999 because I know which range the control is in. Apply and OK. I'm going to review that group. Yep, there's my control. I can right click on that group and from this quick menu I can also export points. When I do that it takes me back to the export points dialog. Format is still PNEZD. And you can see that it's pre-filled limit to points in point group and that point group is set to control. I'll say OK, and the file name, I'm going to say control adjusted. Open and OK. Now if I go and preview those files, here's my topo base adjusted. I can review the file and make sure that everything looks good. You'll notice that the decimal places and in some spots have been truncated. Typically it cuts out all of the zeros. However, it's important to know that whatever decimal places are shown is also whatever the CSV is going to save as if you hit save. As an example, if I decreased my decimal to two decimal places and then hit save, the next time I opened it up, everything after the second decimal place would be filled with zeros. So typically when I save a CSV, I want to increase decimal out to the maximum it looks like four decimal places. Yep, if I go one more, it's zeros. So at the four decimal places, that's where I'll hit save. If you're not making any changes to the CSV, you're just reviewing it, don't save it all. Just leave it as, as it is, review the file, and go ahead and hit X to close out. What are some issues that I might run into working with point files? Well, if I were to import a file that had point numbers that were already being used in the drawing, Let's uh, use the control adjusted, for instance. Open PNEZD and OK. It's going to bring up a dialog that says, hey, there's duplicate point numbers going on. What do you want to do? Resolution, use next point number. I can add an offset. I can overwrite them. Uh, merge, I can't think of any instance in which merge is the right move. Sequence from or use the next point number. I'm going to go ahead and add an offset of a thousand. So these points will come in uh, numbered just like they are in my point list over here, but they're going to be a uh, thousand one hundred one, a thousand one hundred two, a thousand three hundred three, and so on. Okay. Now in my control group, I could go to the properties of my control group, and I could uh, change my include range. In my with numbers matching, I can add 1,101 through 1303, apply and OK. And now in my control point group, I can see that the duplicate numbers which I brought in have an offset of 1,000 added to them and they're included in my group. It looks like one of my point groups is confused again, so I'm going to right click on it and update. And now it's been updated and it's ready to go as well. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, and click that subscribe button for more.